Thanks for having me here. Um, I, um, as Barbara said, I started out in family practice and, and uh, quickly got into integrative medicine and then became interested in acupuncture and about 25 years ago uh, became interested more and more in Lyme disease and that's been going on ever since. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, have you learn the concepts of integrative medicine in chronic Lyme disease complex and review concepts in acupuncture and Chinese medicine, including the energetics of uh, everything in our living systems. Then I'll discuss what I call my wheel of function defining chronic Lyme, go into some uh, spin-offs of the wheel, functional endocrinology, food allergies, some candidor aspects, and um, talk a little about parenteral IVC, especially related to Herxheimer's, uh, testing, uh, P, uh, pulse electromagnetic frequencies in medicine, overview of all treatments that I do, and then a case presentation if we have time. So what's chronic Lyme disease complex? This has been discussed at this meeting. It's problems with multiple symptoms related to a tick bite with all the uh, organisms I've mentioned there, plus probably more and symptoms resulting from the spectrum of fatigue and fibromyalgia and also PNEI, um, psychoneuroendocrine immune dysfunction. How do we sort it out? I mean, because there's been a lot of treatment set here, antibiotics, which we all use high amounts for longer periods of time, integrated techniques, but the practitioner has to say, like, with all these treatments and the patient in front of us, how do we really prioritize it. Well, one thing, the one disease, one symptom, one medicine is really archaic. I mean, we don't just treat Lyme disease, we don't just treat pain, we don't just treat, you know, arthritis with one medicine. That, that results in polypharmacy and the patient's usually worse. We need to treat the patient that has Lyme disease and the accompanying uh, dysfunction that the body's manifesting. So we do this starting with functional medicine. And I, I like Etner's uh, definition of this. That it's really complete. It's the discipline of healthcare that utilizes laboratory assessment and early intervention to improve physiologic, emotional, cognitive, and physical function. This approach focuses attention on biochemical individuality, metabolic imbalance, a balance, ecological context, and the unique personal experience in the dynamics of health. Evaluating organ function versus organ pathology, which is what most of us were trained in medical school, is one of the principles of functional medicine. Then they go on to state a lot of the tests that we do, digestive, nutritional, detox, immune, allergy test, uh, endocrinology test, cardiovascular, and then they say they consider these functional medical tests, experimental and investigation, for use in the diagnosis and treatment of various diseases, but they really don't say anything about for the use in functional problems, which I think is where their statement goes awry. But it's a very good definition and starting point. I look at holism as related, as related to holism refers not only to the relationship of medical description and therapy, but to the scope of medical gaze. How you're looking at the whole problem, how you take a, a look at the whole gestalt and understand it. So, functional medical uh, medicine concepts. Health is not just the absence of disease. We're looking for a place that we can actually decide to go from optimal health. And, you know, this can be macro versus micro. In other words, when I'm treating a Lyme patient with antibiotics, that's really macro. When I'm treating them with pulse electromagnetic frequencies, that's micro. A and it's interesting how I can do my initial uh, intake and jot down what I think is wrong, adrenal problems, you know, Lyme and stuff, and then send them to my therapist who does the Ondamed, which is kind of a scanning technique, and the patient will come down with me not talking to the therapist before they go up and say, wow, you know, everything we talked about showed up on that machine, and it really reinforces that their body is going through what they are complaining about. Uh, acute versus chronic, Western medicine for an MI, acute medicine is the best medicine, Western medicine, you want that stroke. Chronic disease, 
people who are walking around, vertical disease. When we're trained in medical school, we train for horizontal disease. So when people go into those eight or nine doctors that the previous speaker talked about, that's really vertical disease. And most doctors are saying, well, when you become ver horizontal, I can then treat you. But vertical, it's in your head, I don't know what to do, etc. What we're really looking about in anti-aging medicine is rectangularization of life. You go out to 110, 120 years, and you go, rather than 60, 65 with a downhill spiral. So it's pharmaceutical meds versus nutritional and integrative medicine, and then, as I'll get into later, biophysics and medicine. So there's a duality in medicine. We see it all the time. ILADS versus IDS, as, as Dan Cameron uh, so nicely stated. Lyme versus not Lyme. Pathology versus functionality. This is really, I think, key because when someone goes to a neurologist and he says there's nothing wrong and that patient has the litany of complaints, they are not functioning well. Hormonally, we see it all the time. We've all been trained. It, uh, Addison's disease is low adrenal function. Cushing's disease is high, but let's say that person on the, Lyme te on the lab test has just above what would be Addison's, but they need to function at a higher level for them. They're under stress. They are really clinically hypoadrenal. Same thing with thyroid. When we used to measure PBIs, we would miss. Then all of a sudden we got T4s. Then we got T4 IRA. Now we got TSH. And now even if a TSH is 0.5 to 4.5, and someone is running 3.5 and has clinical symptoms, the endocrinologists are even giving thyroid. So we can go on there for, you know, neurology with an MS pathological diagnosis of multiple sclerosis versus just demyelinating symptoms which are caused from possibly infection, allergies, toxicities, etc. Then of course there's Newtonian versus quantum physics which is a big thing in the last couple of years of the body is a quantum uh, machine. Concepts in Chinese medicine which led me to a lot of this is yin and yang, excess versus deficiency, and of course the electronics in the body plus minus, genetics versus environment. 30 years ago when we were doing integrative medicine and doing orthomolecular and using vitamins to help patients' symptoms, we didn't have the data. Now we're finding out that the genetics which we thought were one thing and the environment was something else, now the genetics are modifiable by epigenetics. And the things that can affect that are diet, environment, pollution, electromagnetic, and also intention. So really opens up changing the way people's bodies are reacting even from their genes on. Um, so disease versus dysfunction. So I had a, a, a case of a, a couple of times this year where pe uh, kids came in with diagnosis of juvenile uh, inflammatory arthritis. It, it's no longer JRA. I got that from uh, Andrea Gato. And a um, couple of rheumatologists saw this one child, wanted to do methotrexate. I saw her. My context was different. Infection, probably Lyme, and one was Lyme, one was not Lyme, but responded to antibiotics. And both kids were totally disabled at two years old, walking around on their knees and 95% better on antibiotics. And so that's looking at it from outside the box. Uh, another case I had was a 55-year-old woman who came in with, uh, for treatment of menopause, or just that. And on my exam, she had neuropathy, treated by neuron, she felt that was all right. Uh, negative workup by neurology. She had muscle aches, she had arthralgias. Uh, so I did my workup. Before my Lyme test came back, she was positive on soy wheat. Took her off those foods, she was about 80, 85% better. And then when I treated her for the Lyme, she's now about 95%. Incidentally, she had a family history of uh, Alzheimer's and she tested positive for APOE 4-4 and she did have herpes. There's a, some literature now that herpes virus infections can uh, affect the amyloid deposits and have an effect on Alzheimer's. So let's go, I just want to go in a little to Chinese medicine and energy just to look at the body in a different way. Our health is defined as a state of optimal balance between yin and yang uh, processes, okay? A person's constitution is either strengthened or weakened by the effect 
of physiologic stresses, psychological or emotional issues, and exposures to environmental uh, burdens. Chinese medicine has been around 4,000 years, and this is a pretty good um, definition of functional medicine. So the, Chinese, the meridians run on different parts of the body. Everybody knows that. Yin is on the front, yang is on the back. And the acupuncture points are on the meridians. And the meridians are associated with certain organs. Now this isn't a direct um, connection. It's kind of tangential. So you know, you're not going to say if that person has a gallbladder um, problem that you're going to diagnose on acupuncture that they have a bad gallbladder. But the gallbladder in Chinese medicine have, has references to a lot of systems. So the points are harmonic relay stations, and normal meridians have a coherent electromagnetic harmony, and abnormal meridians have a non-coherent harmony. This is work out of Fritz Popp, physicist in Europe, and Beverly Rubrik, who wrote a, a very good book, um, Life at the Edge of Science. A very small book, but really uh, incredible.